And away we go for NFL Week 17 picks. Chris Hassel joined by Brady Quinn and the red hot Pete Prisco. What a week, buddy boy. The leaves turn brown, I'll be wearing the league crown. We're still down. <laughs> well, the leaves turned brown more... uh, like a month ago, <laughs> and they're long gone. <laughs> well, you know, you were just in Iowa, so everything. Yeah, they're happen. long gone. 13, 3, and 1. Yeah, we great week. Get, we get doubled up when we have our best Pete, bet. Pete called a shot. He said he was going to win 12. He actually did one better than that. How do you feel about this week? But he's still trailing you, Brady. Well, yeah, because I've been really good. It's just no one seems to notice that, right? Consistent, winning every yeah, I still, week. I still think that record is a little, something's off with that. If you haven't, you haven't really had that much. I, had I haven't had a losing week. week in like five weeks, Pete. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I'm, I'm. I know it's tough for you to deal with. No, no it really isn't. It is. It is. No, I'm. It I'm is. on fire. I'm running you down. I'm hunting oh, you down. You're feeling good. You had a bad. <laughs> you had a bad week last week. Huh? Bad bad week last week. Two weeks. Yeah, and I had one two weeks ago too. Yeah. A bad week. Two yeah. weeks in a row. Very and inconsistent. I got the hot. Yeah. It's yeah. not. It doesn't. Almost matter. like the inconsistency of a backup quarterback. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they always regress to the mean, Pete. Right? Yeah. They are who they are. You are what you are. Uh, and what am I? I'm going to stay hot, though. Okay. Oh, well, let's okay. start so with the Thursday night. I'm not going to win 13, though. I will tell you that. It's a weird matchup on Thursday night because you have the Cowboys now 10-point favorites against the Titans. They're double-digit favorites because, for the most part, this game doesn't mean anything for Tennessee. No, but it means everything for Dallas still, who still has the potential chance of winning the NFC East as well as the number one overall seed. If they were to win out, they need some help. They need Minnesota to lose one, San Francisco to lose one. With San Francisco's schedule, that's probably unlikely. Um, but they also would, would need, you know, Philly to be able to drop uh, a couple games. Two. And, and obviously, you know, with, with Jalen Hurts being out, that's a possibility. So everything's still out there for them. They need to win this game. But I think they need to continue to keep building that mojo. We tend to forget what the previous two weeks looked like before their win this past week versus the Eagles, right? I mean, they got beat by the Jacksonville Jaguars. They almost lost to the Houston Texans. At home. They needed that win last week versus Philly. And look, Gardner Minshew kept them in that game. It's not like their defense was that stout. So this is one where I think it'd be good to see the Dallas Cowboys put forth one of those dominant performances where they put themselves in position to potentially win the NFC East and maybe that number one overseed. And Chris has touched on it. This is meaningless for the Tennessee Titans. Everything matters for them week 18. I will be astounded if Derrick Henry plays this. He's listed on the injury report. Or Ryan Tannehill, right? He, he, but yeah, him. Tannehill is probably not. But you look at Henry, he's listed on the injury report too, and that's usually a, a sign that they're not going to play him. Why would you play him? The game means nothing. Why take shots when he doesn't have to play? Their offensive line, by the way, is awful. Awful right now. They had It was awful to begin with, and now they have their centers gone. They have a backup right guard. It is so bad it, you know, that you can make them the honorary spinning tops of the week for the entire season. That's how bad they've been, and so they're going to be bad here against that defensive front. Dallas blows them out. This is ugly. Well, I should say this. It, it's a rough spot for Malik Willis to be in because, in part, the offensive line issues probably isn't going to have much help, especially if Derrick Henry's not in there, and on top of that, you know, right now you're going up against one of the better defensive fronts. And he's not ready to play. Persons. And that. I mean, he needs more development, He obviously. hasn't thrown for 100 yards yet. No, and, and again, I, I don't know if, if, you know, again, he will at this point the way they've looked, at least the way he's looked. All right, both on the Cowboys, even though they're giving double digits here. Uh, Titans, by the way, according to Sportsline, with a 27% chance to win the division. That game in Jacksonville, Week 18, is going to be for the division for both of those teams, no matter what happens this Time, week. time. Might be the Jaguars. You, you, you said it a couple weeks ago. Look out for Jacksonville. Yeah. Now, you didn't pick them. No, you didn't cover. pick them. That's right. But you said, look out. I picked them. You didn't pick them. Right. That's, That's probably why I had a loss that week. All right. We're going to continue on by picking every game in week 17 against the spread. A huge swing in point spread for a major matchup in the AFC wildcard race as the Patriots face the Dolphins, who are without Tua. Early Sunday slate on... JBS. Dolphins and Pats. That line swung. Dolphins were favored by two and a half. And then the two news came out. He's not going to play. Now the Patriots favored by two and a half. Chiefs, 13 point favorites at home against the Broncos. Jags, meaningless game at the Texans, but they are favored. And the Giants favored by five against the Colts as New York makes a push for the postseason. Pete Prisco and Brady Quinn are picking these games against the spread. Let's start with the Patriots and Dolphins, who still both control their own fate. Both control their own fate, but this is one where you're looking at a Bill Belichick coach team at home in a spot where they've got to win in order to keep their playoff hopes alive, going up against a backup quarterback in Teddy Bridgewater. Now, 
Teddy Bridgewater historically has been really good against the spread. He's exceeded people's expectations. And I think, you know, look, this is not the same Patriots team we've seen in years past. They struggle to score offensively. Defensively, they've given up some big plays. It's not the same. I think it's very capable, but I'm not betting against Bill Belichick at home in this spot. And I think if you go back to last week, they easily could have beat the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, they're knocking on the door, you know, before that Ramondre Stevenson fumble, and, and who knows? So I'm going to lay the two and a half points here. I just I can't bet against Bill. They were getting blown out before the pick and six. And guess what? It didn't matter I because they came back in the game. I know, but okay. they were getting blown out before the pick six. And uh, Give them some credit for fighting back. They then. fought back, and this is two heartbreaking losses in a row for them. But I'm with you on this one. I think when you look at Belichick against Teddy Bridgewater, I think they'll be able to handle what he can do throwing the ball down the field. He's not great throwing it down the field. Here's the other thing. Miami gets away from the run too much, Way too much. I think. And, but this is a tough team to run against. So this offense, you know, people forget that because they have the great weapons outside. It's predicated on running the football. And I think at times, over the course of the last three, three, three games, he's gotten away from it. I think he needs to stick with it, but it's tough to run on him. New England's offense isn't great, but I think I'm with you. Belichick will find a way. I think the Patriots win this game. And Patriots have to beat the Bills in the final week of the season to go to the postseason. Good luck with that. Have we seen the last of two of this season? Uh, I, it's, it seems like more likely than not we probably have, especially if they lose this game. At that point in time, I think they'd be on the outside looking in. But, but if they win to beat the Jets the next week, then they'd be back in, I think. So uh, well, if, if New England loses right. to Buffalo. So, um, and, or they could lose another playoff spot. Look, I think if you asked him, he'd probably want to play. Mm -hmm. But then they calls into question you know, whether or not you know, somebody needs to protect him from himself, which, by the way, kudos to Mike McDaniel for identifying – the fact that there was something that was off in the meeting, watching the game tape, going back over it. He was the one that actually alerted to it, like, go see a doctor. Go get checked out, because Tua wouldn't have done that. So for all the flack, I think, Mike McDaniel got earlier in the season where they're saying, is this team following the protocol? He's doing right by his players, and he's trying to make sure that they're you know, being aware of it. But the reality is, as a player, you want to be out there. I mean, this is his livelihood, his opportunity. You're not thinking about down the road when you're 50, 60. Sometimes you need someone who's old like Pete to come remind you of like, hey, you don't want to have jelly in your brain when you get older. Well, McDaniel's not that old. I never had I didn't, my concussions. We used to just stick smelling salts in our face yeah. and go on. But you're old. You can talk from that perspective. No, I am fine. My my mind is as sharp as can be. All you want to do, you want to see my picks from last week? Take a look. <laughs> All right. No, but you got to be careful with it, though, yeah. Brady. You can't be you can't be just. I, I'm, I'm going to play because I'm part of the team. I'm not be saying careful. That. There's there's that. It's hard to, to walk the fine line of being responsible for yourself, for your future, for your family, but at the same time, too, being a warrior and being a leader. When people expect you to be out there, we just talked about other guys who miss time when you're an injury, and you're kind of the forgotten man anymore. Right. And it's a tough spot to be in as a player. He's already experienced that once this season. And now, at this point in time in his career, he's playing the best football he's ever played. They're on the cusp, potentially, of making the playoffs. You can imagine the internal conflict he's got right now battling. One quick thing. If he goes back and plays and he has another one, yeah. then what? Yeah, and now you're talking about long-term, maybe yeah. not being able to play ever again. Right. Already had to, at least a couple this season that have been diagnosed. Once again, in concussion protocol is to a tongue of Also, at 1 o'clock Eastern on CBS, it's the Broncos who fired Nathaniel Hackett this past week, taking on the Chiefs, who are still in the running for the one seed. They need some help. Buffalo would need to lose. Yeah, look, these two teams on paper match up personnel-wise. Now, obviously, with everything going on in Denver right now, you're concerned about – where Russell Wilson's head's at, what this offense is going to look like. They were awful, awful last week versus the Rams, who have not been a good football team. And so I've got some concerns, but this is a big line. This late in the season, two divisional opponents where weather, weather can play a bit of a factor. And I think the way sometimes these two teams match up, I can see Kansas City by winning this thing by 10, but I don't know that they win it by two touchdowns. So I'm actually going to take the points here. Sometimes you get that dead cat bounce back where we see a coach get fired and the team rallies and they figure out a way of, of even winning a game. I'm not saying that's the case here. Maybe this is a game that stays a little closer than, than people realize. Because guess what? If you're Russell Wilson right now, we're taking a look at him. They just fired the head coach. Guess who they want to try to move on from next after you fire the head coach? Regardless of the contract situation, all that stuff, he's the next guy that the bullseye's on as far as who's going to receive the blame. So now it's up to him to figure out how to get this thing going back on track the rest of the season next year. They fired the wrong guy. I mean, they, they, they should have fired Russell Wilson. He's been dreadful. And look, Nate Hackett has, wasn't good either, but who the heck is going to win with that guy playing quarterback? He's terrible. He has he not is, played well this year. He, he's been terrible. Why can't you say <laughs> it? He's been awful, Brady. Say it.
He stinks. First off, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not in that room to know what's being said offensively with their scheme Who and everything cares? else. Who cares? He stinks. It matters. He stinks right now. Here's where you're so short-sighted. You have a general manager who is retained, who hired that first-time head coach, right. who oversaw the fact that they hired a first-time defensive coordinator, a first-time offensive coordinator, a first-time offensive line coach. Mike Munchak, who's maybe the best in the NFL, well-regarded amongst players, coaches, he lives in Denver. They didn't reach out to him to want to come be their offensive line coach. You have to hire Jerry Rossberg after the fact. And even though you're George Payton and you helped with that decision, what were you in the offseason saying, hey, maybe you could hire Jerry Rossberg this offseason okay, to help you out? You can blame everybody all you want. There's a and lot there's that a lot goes of, into it. I, believe me, I know there's a lot of blame to go around, but the quarterback is awful right now. And the players know it. Well, why do they bench it. him? You just saw the Raiders bench Derek no, Carr. No, maybe they should. You can see it. The players, when you watch the tape, they're jumping around. All the receivers are angry because he can't, he can't hit him. He doesn't throw to him. They, every play, there's somebody jumping around. They, they think put in Brett open. Rippin. They tried uh, that, right? How'd that yeah. work out? It doesn't matter. The, the, the quarter, they don't. Brett Rippin's not making two hundred fifty million dollars. Exactly. Is he? And, and they didn't trade away all those. Probably doesn't give him as good it's a chance. It's the worst trade in the history of the National Football League, bar none. You're already announcing that. It's done. Not even a year into he it. He can't play anymore. So he can't next, move. So he next doesn't year, move. If they end up being a playoff team, you're not going to walk that back. Not walking it back. He can't play anymore. <laughs> That's he, who wants to coach? Who wants that job? I've they got to him say stuff like this about Kirk Cousins, and now he's come completely full circle now. That. No, he, who, who wants that job? You're saddled with that contract and that quarterback. That's not true. They could maybe find another part and move on from it. Good luck with you that. You don't know that. Who wants him? We'll see. Can he trade him to the XFL? They, don't, they might not even want him. <laughs> Did you give a pick? Yeah, no. I'm taking the Chiefs. The Chiefs are gonna. The Chiefs are gonna blow them out. It's so worked up. I mean, wow. I mean, you be careful gosh. with your ticker, man. Just, no, just, ah, it down. I just, I just think everybody loves to blame everybody else. Blame him. Nobody ever blames him. I, I think a lot of people have blamed him. Uh, I'm blaming him worse. It's him. It's the quarterback. He stinks. Okay. <laughs> Worst trade in NFL history, bar none. Let's move on to Pete's Jags. They're sitting right there with a chance to win the division in Week 18. Can't do anything about it here, as as you mentioned earlier in the week, Pete, and as some know. The only way this game matters is if that final game ends in a tie, which is unlikely. Or, at this or if Miami were to lose both their games in Jacksonville. It'd be a wild card. It'd be a wild card. But um, I don't think Miami's going to lose both their games. But still, you, you look, Doug Peterson said he's going to play to win. Guys who are, are able to play are going to play, which is what you should do. You're a young team. You're the Jack. It's not like you've been in the postseason for the last six years and you got a bunch of veterans. Go play. Go try and keep this thing going. Get some momentum. Look, everybody looks at Jacksonville as a joke of a franchise. Let's be real. That's the perception of them around the league. If they lose to the Texans and don't play well, then everybody goes, oh, they're back to being themselves again. They go into the, beat the Texans, and then they go into that game next week with a little bit of momentum. They're carrying it through. And who knows? They might carry it into the postseason as well. So I think this is going to be a tough game, though. They'll win it, but it's going to be close because why? because the Texans always play them close, and the Texans have had great success against them, even when Jacksonville's been the better team. Nine straight. And, 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 and give them credit, right? They're still playing, fighting hard as a two-win team, beating Tennessee last week. You, know, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't look at Houston and think they're a two-win team the way they played that game, although Malik Willis has really struggled for Tennessee. Uh, that being the case, I'm on the other side of this one. I think the Jacksonville Jaguars have just had a different spot, better team at this point. I think they'll continue to ride the momentum of how Trevor Lawrence has played over the course of the past seven games. He's been outstanding. He's been everything I think they hoped he would be. Uh, and so for a lot of the same reasons you just talked about, I think they're going to play their guys. They're going to win this game. They're going to cover that number two. Houston will revert back to, I think, what they are at this point in time. They're a team that's going to be drafting at the top of the draft and looking for that quarterback in next year's draft. It's amazing what happens to a quarterback when he gets rid of that bad feeling he had in his stomach from that other guy. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Texans better be careful. I know what you're referring to. Uh, yeah, you know, your guy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> this is just, I mean. I knew what he was referring to. Of course you did. It's always Urban Meyer when we're talking about the <laughs> Jags. You, I mean, he nearly derailed the kid's career right from the start. I don't know about that. But. Oh, yeah, I know about that. By the way, if the Texans win and the Bears keep losing, Bears might end up with that number one spot. You like that, Texas. huh, Well, in Texas, well you don't did. need a quarterback. Yeah, there. right. Well, Why would it matter? They can hold teams hostage. <laughs> it's not a hostage it's quarterback in this bait. draft. Have another old trade bait. Yeah, oh. right. Come on. Come on, Chris. <laughs> Let's go to the Colts and the Giants. Also 1 o'clock Eastern on CBS. Giants in a great spot to make the postseason. 91% chance to get in, according to Sportsline. A lot of it is because of this matchup. They, they win, and they are going to be in, more than likely.
Look, the Foles really struggled last week. You're getting the sense that you know maybe he's in there obviously to protect Matt Ryan and, and, and what they would owe him if he was got if he got hurt and he couldn't pass exactly. physical. It probably helps your draft position too. Ultimately, if you're looking at trying to find a solution through the draft, that'd be another uh, potential reason why you're looking at Nick Foles playing in there right now as opposed to someone else. Um, and look, the Giants last week, they got, look, they got beat by a 61-yard field goal at the end. They they play playing really, really well. Still have a shot for the postseason. So I'm going with the Giants here. I don't think you could say enough about Daniel Jones, the way he's played, and Brian Dable's impact on him. The only thing I'll ask you is, what do you do now? Because he's played well. I, I don't know that you're walking away saying, like, Daniel Jones is a guy that's going to lead us to a Super Bowl. But I think he's earned the right to be the quarterback next season. Probably tag him, I would think. I, I'd keep him around. I mean, I Don't you feel like you're kicking that can down the road then? I don't know. I, I don't want to see maybe a little bit more. But we'll see. Maybe yeah, they, have to make they the win, playoffs. they get in the playoffs, yeah. and we'll see what they can do in the postseason. He played really well Great. last week. I mean, he was good against well, – everybody people, plays against yeah. the Vikings, plays well. But – the greatest accident in the history of the National Football League is playing quarterback again for the Colts. You say the same stuff week after week. That's so true, though. Doesn't it play out that way? Every sing- How did he win a Super Bowl and be the MVP and out Tom Brady? That guy that we saw on Monday night, that's the same he guy. Did it. He did it. It's still the greatest accident of all time. I mean, it's like me getting four holes in one. It never happened, but it might. It happened for him. It happened for him. He's not going to win this game. A par three course. The Giants are the Giants are going to uh, blow him out this game. The Colts uh, are. I think the Colts. You know where the Colts are heading? Bermuda. Okay. And by the way, you like the under this game. I also think a low scoring. Yeah, I would think it'd be low scoring as well. Okay. Let's recap the picks early window on CBS from Pete and Brady after much discussion here. They both like the Patriots minus two and a half against the Dolphins. The Giants minus five against the Colts. Disagreements elsewhere. Eagles coming off that loss to the Cowboys, but they can still clinch a bye with a win over the Saints. We'll pick that one in the rest of Sunday's early slate next. All right, here's the rest of the early slate. These games on Fox. The Commanders still controlling their own fate. They need to beat the Browns. They're in that last playoff spot is Washington. Eagles hosting the Saints. Saints are still in contention. Panthers, Bucks. Both of those teams control their own fate in the division. If the Panthers went out, they're in. If the Bucs win that game, they clinch it next week. Cardinals and Falcons, uh, we'll talk to Brady about that. He'll be calling it. And the Bears and Lions, Detroit, still mathematically alive. All right, let's start with Carson Wentz returning to the starting job for the Commanders as they take on the Cleveland Browns. We talked about this a little bit earlier, but I think he's just got a higher ceiling than where Taylor Heineke is at for this offense. Uh, he's just a better downfield passer, opens up the passing game more now. That doesn't mean he doesn't have a lower floor where Taylor Heineke maybe wouldn't put them in as bad positions. And we've seen Carson Wentz make some awful decisions in the past. I mean, he's thrown a left-handed interception before. Not many quarterbacks can say that. So um, this, is, this is a step in, I think, the right direction for Ron Rivera in saying, if we're going to make a playoff run, if we're going to do anything, we need to put the guy who has the highest ceiling and hope that he's going to play at that high level as we move forward here, if we can make it. Um, but on the other side of things, I mean, the Browns have been so bad, Pete, offensively. Was it three touchdowns last four games? Um, I don't feel good about either one of these teams. I, I think they're, they're both kind of even in this matchup. I think I like the under the best, but I'll, I'll take the two points in Cleveland in this case. I'm just betting eventually. Deshaun Watson's got to figure this thing out. And, and the commander's secondary was awful last week. I mean, you had, got, you had two guys running wide open sometimes in the same area of the field. I don't know what the heck was going on. So there's some plays to be made there for Deshaun Watson if he can figure this out. Yeah, I'm on the commanders here, and I don't, I'm with you. I had a tough time with this game because – you don't know what the Cleveland offense is right now. Uh, well, you they, know what they are. They're terrible. Yeah, but I, I, Watson had a couple drops in the red zone, one in the end zone. He should have had a touchdown pass late in the game. And the conditions were terrible last yeah. week. I mean, it was bad. It's hard to throw. But they can't stop the run. I think Brian Robinson is going to run wild here no matter who plays quarterback. The problem I had watching Washington last week was their offensive line was awful. The tackles yeah. both have problems. San Francisco will make you look. I know, but Miles Garrett must be licking his chops ready to go against this, this, these two tackles. And they played well in the past, Leno and uh, uh, on the one side, particularly the left side. He's played well. Uh, Lucas on the right side, not so much. But they struggled last week. I think that's going to be the difference. I think they'll play better this week. They'll run the ball. You've got to run the ball. You can't run it against What's San Francisco. What's happened to the Cleveland's ground game? Yeah. 
I mean, that, that, their offensive line's not playing great either. No, but still, I mean, that, this isn't necessarily the front to do it against in Washington, but that's, that's one of the things. Since Watson's taken over, it's almost like their running game and wanting to rely on, on those guys in the backfield has completely gone away. Yeah, I, I'm taking Washington, I think. And Green Bay's rooting against Washington, obviously, because right. they need the commanders to lose mm -hmm. one game at least. And Brady said you, you like the under as well? I, I do. I mean, look, conditions could play a factor. Uh, but also, I mean, is there much of a home field advantage no. in, in Washington? I mean, you've got the, the Hogs are coming back to be honest. They're suing the team at this point in time. It just seems like it's, it's a, mess. a mess. Unders are 4-0 in Deshaun Watson starts this season. Sportsline giving the Commanders a 30% chance to hang on to one of those playoff spots. Uh, they are minus two in this one this weekend. Let's move on to the Eagles who control that top spot right now. All they need to do is win one of their last two games. They might have to win one of those games or maybe maybe both of them without Jalen Hurts. This to me is going to be a tough challenge for Gardner Minshew because I'm, I'm making this pick not expecting Jalen Hurts to play in this game. So I am expecting it to be Gardner Minshew. The Saints defense has been playing lights out and I think they'll present a really tough challenge. They match up well versus the Eagles. The biggest question is can the Saints score any points? You know, Andy Dalton has been relegated to basically just game managing. They mix in some shots and then trying to get the ball to Camara, and then Taysom Hill is their wild card. So in this case, seven to me is too big of a number here. Uh, so I'll take the seven points, but again, that's under the assumption that we're not going to see Jalen Hurts, who I do think adds a different element to this Eagles offense. Yeah, the, the Saints are playing back-to-back -back road games. And, oh, I knew you were going to bring that I up. mean, that's tough. It's tough to do. And I think, hey, it must have worked out well for me last week since I went 13-3-1. You actually but, didn't win any of those. The <laughs> ones that you brought that up, I went back and checked. Yeah, you were 0-2 on those ones. Uh -huh. I did. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, this is a tough back-to-back -back for them. And I'm, I'm, taking the, I'm taking the Eagles. I, look, I don't love Gardner Minshew. I, I know there's people in this building that think he's, he should be starting in a lot of spots. Uh, Heath Cummings thinks, okay. he's, thinks he'd be starting in about 10 spots, and I don't think he's that. Well, just Why? Just because Heath looks like him? Yeah, he's, he's average as average can be, and I don't, yeah. I, I don't think he's that You've good. You've never seen the results? Plus, no, no Lane Johnson. No Lane Johnson at right tackle. That's big. But I'm still going to take the Eagles because I think – I think the Saints offense, like you said, it is. Uh, who knows what the heck that is? I don't know what that is. But, again, Taysom Hill, your guy, he steps in. He gets some gimmick. carry the load there. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's a great gimmick. Who's the better quarterback, Taysom Hill or Russell Wilson? Oh, Russell Wilson's a better quarterback. Ooh. Taysom Hill can't play quarterback. He's a gimmick. So you're saying the Broncos shouldn't trade for Taysom Hill is what you're saying? No. But he'd be a lot cheaper. Or would he? Maybe a lot cheaper. Uh, Saints, you be. Saints are still alive, by the way, but they need to win out, and the Bucks would have to lose out. And the Bucks, all they need is a win this week against the Carolina Panthers, and they clinch the division. I feel like a lot weighs on whether Vita Vea plays in this game because the Panthers can run the football. They've been very effective doing so. The Bucks continue to just have a hard time scoring points. I mean, they had no business winning the game last week. They come back, get a nice win versus Arizona in overtime. And maybe I'm just holding on hope in the fact that the Bucks will eventually have that game where we go, there it is, there it is. But I don't know that it's going to be back. I don't feel great about either side here. I'm laying the three points. It's Tom Brady, Tampa Bay at home. You know, we said that last week. I said, this is going to be the week. It's got to be the week. We've been waiting for it all year. Here comes Tom Brady. It's going to be a Tom Brady game. And they were terrible for most of that game. They were awful. They were better when they went faster at yep. the end of that Hard game. So uh, I think that might be something they look at going forward. But I'm taking Carolina. I think they're going to run it and run it. And their defense is pretty like good. Yeah. They really are. And, you know, Derek Brown's having a great year inside. The, the pass rushers can get after the quarterback. The back end's improved the great J.C. Horn going to play, though? I know he That's was... iffy. Yeah. yeah. That'd be a big loss for them. And so I think when I look at this, I'm taking Carolina. And if Carolina wins the last one, they win that division. Yeah. Steve Wilkes will keep the job. By the way, people I hope, around I the hope league, he does you know that. You know this. People around the league think Steve Wilkes was a heck of a football coach and got a raw deal in, in Arizona. Look, I was with him when I was, uh, I believe in college, he was with us for a year, and, and I have the utmost respect for him. He got a raw deal in Arizona. Everyone's going to admit that. The interesting thing would be if he did get the head coaching job, you know, if they went out, that scenario played out, is they're in a position where you think, all right, do they bring in a veteran free agent? They trade for someone like Derek Carr has now been benched. Do you try to, you know, sign a free agent like Jimmy Garoppolo to come in because they went the draft pick route. He got burned by that in Arizona. This team's, I think, ready to win right now. With the running game, I agree. with the defense. I agree, but I heard they have a no crybaby sign on the outside of the stadium, so it wouldn't be Derek Carr. <laughs> Speaking of the Arizona Cardinals, they are at Falcons, both teams eliminated. Brady, you're going to be on the call for this one. I get the chance to call this game. It looks like Cole McCoy will be back starting for the Arizona Cardinals, which should open up some things for that offense. I mean, when you go back and look at last week with Trace McSorley, 
a tough position. You know, a third-string quarterback getting his first start this late in the year against a team that's still vying for the playoffs. And, and really, they did everything they could to kind of scheme up some things to allow him to be comfortable. Unfortunately, then, that means you eliminated, really, DeAndre Hopkins, who didn't have a catch until about a little less than eight minutes left in that game. It was targeted a few times before that, but just really could never get him involved in the game. That's going to be a big difference in this one because DeAndre Hopkins, I promise you, will be targeted early and often once Colt is back behind center. And that's what I think is, is probably going to be one of the, the challenges for this Atlanta Falcons de- team that's been competitive this year with Desmond Ritter. There's still some growing pains there. You know, he's a young quarterback, and you can see flashes of his ability running tight windows, a little better anticipating. Uh, but he's still got some growth to go. So it should be a tight game, I think, between these two based on Atlanta 2 being at home and, and have that home field advantage. I want to see where the motivation is for Arizona. I know it's a long trip, bad team, playing for nothing. At least in Atlanta, you're at home. You have a young quarterback who's trying to win his first first NFL yep. game as a starter. Uh, I think there's something to play for them there, and I'm, I'm going to take uh, the Atlanta Falcons. Who'd you pick? I'm calling the game, so I don't do that. Why? Uh, I'll do it after the fact. No, no. We got to. You didn't see the note at the bottom. Uh, of the It screen? says calling the game. It said, it said pass. Pass. Calling the game. Calling the game. Why do you have to? Pass? I didn't put pass. But why do you have to pass when you're calling? The I game? just said you're calling the game. Yeah, but so you can't make a pick on the game. Why? I've been advised angry? by my legal counsel that given the inside information that we know and possess, we are not allowed to publicly give a selection for the game. Okay. All so. right. Not, not to get into the legalese of all this, but there is that out there. Okay. But you know if Pete misses this pick, he's going to say it doesn't count because you didn't pick. No, no, it counts because I'm going to get it right. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Pete, confident after that 13-3 and three week. Bears, Lions, Detroit uh, might have missed their opportunity last week, but Sportsline giving them a 22% chance to get in. First things first, got to win this. Yeah, they looked awful last week. I mean, there's nowhere else to, nowhere else to put it. Uh, they got their butts kicked. Dan Campbell admits that maybe his team deserved to get their butts kicked. And it's a wake-up call for them. Uh, and I think that this wake-up call, unfortunately, for the Chicago Bears is going to be taken out on the Bears. It's a big number for a Lions team that I think in the past you might look at and say there's no chance here. But I'm laying them. Uh, I think Jared Goff's had a heck of a year, minus what we saw uh, last week from him. And overall, I think this team will respond after a buck-kicking last week. I'm with you. If, if they had won last week and this was the sandwich game in between the Packers next week, then I might say, okay, maybe the Bears Trap hang game. around and, and they might cover the number. But I don't think it's going to happen here. I think the Lions will get it back on track. Uh, they were just brutalized in the run game for over 300 yards last week. Yeah. How does that happen for a team that was only given up barely over 80 the last seven weeks of the season? It made no sense. They'll get back on track. They win the game and cover. All right. A ninth straight loss would be the longest losing streak in franchise history for the Bears, and they've been playing since the NFL was created 103-some years ago. I covered those games. <laughs> Way back then, I covered them. Uh, let's go to recap the picks. Not much agreement here from uh, I like it. Pete well, there's Pete, one. Pete's down, so he needs a lot of There's one in limbo. Well, that's that's the pass. That's Brady's first <laughs> official pass. Uh, pass. Close to a decade. Come on, Mayrone. Lions minus six is the only pick that they agree on. Up next, what do we have here? Oh, it's the spinning top of the week. Is he going to single somebody out? No, it looks like we're showing a few different players. And it looks like they're on the Jets. Let's look at the late slates on Sunday afternoon. 49ers now double-digit favorites against the Raiders who uh, benched Derek Carr. The Jets, slight favorites in Seattle against the Seahawks. Vikings, Packers. Green Bay needs to win out and get some help to get into the postseason, but it's possible. Chargers just clinched their postseason berth last week, playing for seeding now. Brady Quinn, Pete Prisco going to pick these games. And let's start with the CBS game, 425 Eastern time. It's the Packers and the Vikings. If the Vikings beat the Packers, just send them on their way. If they don't, you never know. They could end up playing in the postseason. Just start with Pete because he's going to say what he normally says. Is this a big game, Pete? Oh. Uh, No, it's not really a big game for Kirk Cousins. It's big for the Packers. It's big for the Packers. Not big for Kirk Cousins. No. I would say every matchup. By the way, I want to give Kirk Cousins a lot of credit. He's playing really good football. He's been playing great for a while now. He has. I mean, we got to give him – See, I'll give quarterbacks. I've been complimenting him for a while. For how many years? For years. years. Yeah, all the time he won all those playoff games, you've been complimenting him. I get it. I understand. Definitely last year. But you know what, though? I'm going to give him a lot of credit. He deserves it. He's playing really good football right now. I want to give him credit for that. Okay. And I'm not and I'm not being sarcastic. I'm being true. He deserves it. You say I can't ever give quarterbacks credit. When do you credit. break out the F word for the Vikings, though? It seems like you do it every week. 
Well, I mean, they do win all one-score games. And fraudulent. Point, They've got a plus five differential. Right, so that makes them fraudulent. At this point, it's, it's, as a 12-win team, it's amazing. It's unbelievable. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. And they're not going to win this game either. Rodgers is going to take one look at that shell coverage defense and just go ding, 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 I, and go right down the field and, and score whenever he wants to. Kirk Cousins will score too, by the yeah. way. High-scoring game. I like the Packers. They need it more. Seeding, not as important as getting in. So I'll take the Packers minus the points. I'm laying the three and a half. I would probably buy it down to an even three because I do think it could be close. I mean, look, the Packers continually cannot stop the run. Dalvin Cook could have a big game where, you know, it's just Kirk Cousins. But if play, Dalvin actually. Cook's having a big game, that and means by the way, Justin, Justin Jefferson's not. Well, it's not that he's not. It's just Dalvin Cook could have a big game. Then off of that, Justin Jefferson gets 12, 14 targets and has a bunch of catches and a bunch of yards. Him versus J.L. Alexander is going to be a fun matchup to watch in this one. Uh, but Jefferson's been phenomenal this year. You, know, you talk about Cousins, so has Jefferson. He deserves a lot, in of, the a lot of record. Conversation. He should be. Yep, He's absolutely. played that well. But, again, this is one where I think we see kind of that, that plus five point differential, however that you want to spin that. I think it plays its factor here. Green Bay's won two in a row now. They're on a roll. Rodgers knows what's in front of them. I'll lay the three and a half. Does that say something, though, that on a team that's 12-3 and three and scoring a lot of points that we're talking about the wide receiver as the MVP and not the quarterback? Uh, I just think Justin Jefferson has gone kind of above and beyond, though. But any other any other team, we're talking about the quarterback. You you probably are making that case. That's yeah. probably true. Yeah, it's probably true. Uh, Packers still need some help. They need to win out. They need uh, some help from the Commanders and or the Giants. But just three weeks ago, they had a one percent chance of making the postseason. Now it's up to thirty-two. And both these guys like the Packers and the over, right? You like the yes, over, Pete? absolutely. Okay. Uh, also on CBS 425 Eastern, the Chargers just wrapped up a playoff berth last week, taking on a Rams team that's uh, revitalized here late with Baker Mayfield. Under Baker Mayfield, it's provided them a spark. The team seems to be playing better. I mean, again, Denver is in a really tough spot. They were kind of a, they were atrocious just a week ago. This will be a different challenge, though, because they're taking on a Chargers team that's starting to find its rhythm. Now, they're not lighting up the scoreboard. Now, last week was a decisive victory, but... I still that? could probably do more of that. Why is that? Why is that? They're not lighting up the yeah. scoreboard? I asked Joe Lombardi. I don't well, know. There's, you just named him. Okay. Well, th that's, that's for you to talk about. I'll say this. No home field advantage here. I don't think either team no. really. But, I mean, the Chargers fans should show out. This team's clinched a playoff spot. The, the Rams obviously aren't in that position. The Steeler fans might show up just to show up. <laughs> I was just going to say. But here's the thing. Like, this game's important for the Chargers to me because I think they want to keep winning and have a chance to be that number five seed. That means you're going to have a chance to play Jacksonville or Tennessee, the winner of that, which I think is the easier route at least to get a win in the wild card round. So this might be that point now where you're looking at going, yeah, we need to try to get up to that five spot to play the AFC South division winner, which right now it's Jacksonville. Still could be Tennessee. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out. But I'm going to go ahead and lay the points here uh, with the Chargers. They're just on a roll right now. Yeah, and if it's Jacksonville, they blew out the Chargers earlier in the year, but they'd rather play the Ravens. Uh, than the Chargers. You'd rather play the Ravens than the Chargers. If you are the four seed, you'd rather play the Ravens oh, than yeah. the five seed than the Chargers. Well, especially, we don't know if we're going to see Lamar Jackson right. at some point. Right, yeah. Yeah. And, and the, but here's the thing about the Chargers. They're, they can't charge her. They're already in. They can't charge. They're going to play loose and free, and they're going to let them throw the ball. You can't charge her in the postseason? No, you could, I'm telling you in this game. Oh, you can't charge okay, her. They're exactly. already in. Could you imagine the pressure on them at home right now if they didn't win the other night? They'd be charging. They're not going to charge her. They're going to light it up. They're going to let them throw the ball down the field, and he's going to have a big day. Justin Herbert, I like the Chargers. Charger. It's the first time since uh, SoFi became home for both of these teams that they're playing in that building. Let's go on to the 49ers against the Raiders. Derek Carr benched for Garrett Stidham for this game and for the rest of the season? This to me is due to two things. Um, obviously his contract, they own I think 40 and a half million or something along those lines about three or four days after the Super Bowl. That's when that kick in if he couldn't pass a physical. So it has to do with that. Clearly they've identified the fact they don't think he's the guy for their future. And so Josh McDaniels and, and Ziegler, they want to move on. Um, it's, it's that I think, look, you can talk about the interceptions, 14 interceptions. I mean, look, we've, we've seen Jameis Winston be quarterback. He's throwing, what, 30? I mean, it's not that high of a number, even though it leads the league. He is the first year in a system on a team that has not played as well as it did a year ago around him, too. So he's catching a lot of heat, a lot of flack, and a lot of the blame for their shortcomings this year. Uh, but they're tanking now. I mean, that's the only reason you put in Jared Stidham at this point, is, is they're tanking. They want to get a better draft position because they've identified maybe a person they're looking at of going after in this year's draft. They're currently in the top 10 spot. That's what this has to be about in trying to get to that 6-11 and 11 mark where they don't win a game the rest of the season. And that the line moved four points instantly on Wednesday when Josh McDaniels announced this. Well, 
Derek Carr, let's not show the throw. He's been bad. Okay, he has not, he's, he's not the worst quarterback in that division. No, he's not the worst quarterback in the division. We know who that is, but he's been bad. And particularly Sunday night, he was terrible. He was, he was really bad. He was last terrible. Week. Uh, and he hasn't had Waller all year, and he gets him back, and his offensive line has had issues. But they have run the ball well this year. They have done that. So this isn't to tank. This is to protect themselves so they get rid of him without having to pay him it, anything. It's that, but it's also so they like, can yeah, end up you want to get – I mean, why? Were they going to beat the 49ers with Derek Carr quarterback? No. Probably not. But they, they may have kept it close, though. No, well, that's a whole different story. That has nothing to do with tanking. That has to do with us, buddy. It does have to do with us. I'm taking the Niners. I think they whack them. I, they were going to whack them anyways. Uh, this is a blowout. The it's 49ers. Not the 10, but, yeah, yeah. I'll lay the 10 points. Yeah. yeah, it was six, and then immediately the way, up to 10. Real quick on this. Mm-hmm. We need to start talking about Nick Bosa as more than just the defensive player of the year. He's starting to venture into that category. When you would watch Aaron Donald on film, and he just the effort he gives every single play, you're seeing that now of Nick Bosa. Like it's not it's past Defensive Player of the Year consideration. Now it's now to like that MVP talk. If we're gonna mention Justin Jefferson, Nick Bosa needs to be considered as part of that conversation too. His impact on the game and how it's helping everyone else out around him. Oh man! But every single play, the type of effort he gives. And, and by the way, he had a third sack last week, but. Wentz flicked it to the back when he was going down. It would have been the third sack for him. The guy's been dominant. One more game to pick. It's, a, it's big for the wild card in uh, both leagues, the AFC and the NFC. The Jets 7-8, and eight, the Seahawks 7-8. and eight. Win, you stay in it, lose, you're done. Look, Mike White's back for the Jets, and I think he adds a different element to that offense and his ability to work through a progression, see the field, and play from the pocket. That just, that's not how Zach Wilson's career has gone thus far. Uh, and you can throw out the win-loss record. Uh, the reality is on that, that has a lot to do with the team out around him when they've won those games, and in particular this season, where I think of their seven wins, five big against backup quarterbacks. So take that for what it's worth. Uh, this, to me, has to do with the fact that the Seattle Seahawks defense will not be able to stop the running attack uh, of the Jets. I also think Mike White will have a lot of productivity, too, throwing against the Jets. And the Jets are going to, or excuse me, the Seahawks going to be without Tyler Lockett, which is a huge loss to Geno Smith, who started to kind of fizzle out. So. I'll lay the two and a half points here. Jets still have everything on the line from the, the, at this point in time, and I think they get a win. Yeah, I, I do too. I, I think when you look at their defense, they had problems with Jacksonville because Jacksonville spread them out and threw it all over the place in the spots where they weren't. They did a great job of scheming against them. I don't think Seattle will. I think Seattle's having problems on offense. Geno Smith's starting to play, struggle a little bit. I like the Jets in this spot. I think they go out there and win the game. How about this? Seattle's not won at home since October 30th. By the way, you mentioned you mentioned uh, this is a big game for wild card game, mm-hmm. in wild card in both both conferences. Yeah. The only game this week that doesn't have any implications, I think, uh, in any way, shape, or form, is the one you're doing. That's right. <laughs> hey, I'll gladly take it. <laughs> <laughs> and meantime, me and you are just going to be sitting on our couches watching. No, it. he'll actually be here working, which is that's the best part is. They asked me to come in on Sunday, yeah. and I called Fox. I was like, I'll take any game. Any game you can get, get me. So I don't, have I don't to want to, be don't have to come in with Pete. Just so I don't have to be with Pete Prisco. <laughs> All right, recapping the late afternoon picks from Brady and Pete. And they like the Packers minus three and a half against the Vikings. Both of those guys, not just Brady, but Pete as well, think that, that it's going to sail over the 48. They like the Chargers. They like the Niners. They like the Jets. Oh, lock lock step on that uh, late slate oh, this week. Up next, huge matchup in the AFC. Bills and Bengals. Buffalo holding the one seed. Kansas City waiting to pounce. But if Cincy can win this, they would have a shot at that bye as well. Two more games to pick, and we're also going to get best bets from Pete Prisco and Brady Quinn. Ravens and Steelers. Steelers still in it. Steelers still have a chance in the wild card race. Dolphins still have a chance in the divisional race. They need the Bengals to lose. The Bengals are at home near Pickham there against the Bills, who are one-point favorites on Monday night. Let's start with the Sunday nighter. Now, the Steelers, as of early this week, are still in it. But they would be eliminated if the Dolphins win earlier in the day. So keep that in mind. Yeah, and that, you know, is not going to play a factor in the players' minds in the locker room, right? They're, they're focusing on the game, the task at hand. Keep talking about that that 5C being so important in the wild card race because you get the AFC South, and that's where the Ravens sit. They don't want to lose any ground to the Chargers, so it's important for that reason. But the Steelers' defense has really been stepping up, playing well. Uh, The offense leaves a lot to be desired. This is one where it's a home team pick for me. Uh, Tyler Huntley is most likely going to start. Lamar Jackson, at least as of right now. Pete didn't practice today. I don't expect him to be out there. 
That being said, they can still run the football. They're extremely physical offensively. Huntley can do enough in the passing game, make it some plays to guys like Mark Andrews to be able to get enough to win this one and cover the three-point spread. See, and the Steelers are also playing to prevent Mike Tomlin from having his first losing season as well. So I think that's in play a little bit as well. Um, I think the Steelers hang around in this game. I think three points is too many. It might be – the Ravens might win it, but it might be one or two, I, I, or it might be a push of three, but I'm going to take the three points because I think the Steelers' defense has really started to merge. Look, Pickett wasn't great the other night. In fact, he struggled early in that game. Weird. I wonder why. Why? Would you tell me? Well, he wasn't getting to his Is their offensive play calling good? Oh. oh, no. Play calling's not very good, but he wasn't getting off his reads quick enough either. But he did, you know what's funny? When he didn't have the offensive play caller really in his ear, he went right down the field, didn't he? It's pretty amazing. Uh, I think they'll hang around in the game. You give me the points, I'll take it. I'll take the Steelers. The big one, though, is on Monday night. Brady, did you want Ooh. one more uh, no, thought no, on that big, game? No, we got a big one on Monday night. Oh, just, it's, it's almost too big to have this late in the season. Too big it's, for Pete. Yeah, it's the Bills and the Bengals. And me, this is heaven for me. Bills right now control that one seed, but nobody's playing better than Cincinnati. I mean, Cincinnati's rolling on offense right now. Defensively, they're playing much better as well. Well, the pick six kind of derailed them a little bit. They, they could have had way, way, way more points early in that game. Speaking of pick six, Will Brinson picked Cincinnati to win the Super Bowl. He didn't HGU pick them before the season. Well, he just picked them just now. Oh, wow. You know who else didn't? Pete Prisca did. No, I didn't. I said they'd win one in ten years, though. So said they two. do. I have that power down to so eight. I picked. I picked the other team that's playing in this game to win the Super Bowl, and I'm sticking with it. I think no. the Buffalo Bills are the better team. I think they'll go in there and find a way to win this game, uh, and then they'll win the last week and end up with the number one seed. And all the playoffs go through there. They're going to be a tough out. They ran the ball last week, Buffalo, 254 yards on the ground. That's the one issue they've had all year is yep. can they run it when they need to run it? They ran it last week, and it wasn't just Josh Allen. They had two guys, one went over 100, Singletary, the other one, Cook, had 99. They need to give Cook more care. I agree. That kid's special. I agree. So I think they run the ball here as well, and I think they find a way to win this game. I'll take Buffalo. I'm with you. I'm laying the point uh, against the, the home underdog here, in part because of the Cincinnati Bengals defense. I just have too many concerns as far as how they're going to stop Josh Allen, not only his ability to run the football as part of that, but what we saw last week, the balance of that offensive attack, the big plays they can create with Stephon Diggs down the field. Uh, and then I think defensively, they match up better against the Bengals, who obviously want to throw the football around the field, but they've got the edge rushers. They've got the coverage players in the back end to match up. So to me, it's a matchup game. I'm laying the point. I think, and obviously Buffalo wins this one, uh, but I think they it could even get you know, a little more handle it. Quarter, quarterback envy game. That's what this is. All the people around the league who don't have one are going to sit there and go with their jaws wide open. Oh By the my way, gosh. Lock unity, the over is the play on this one. I like the over in this one. Too. I know you do. But uh, now that you have it as your best bet, I don't because you've been horrible with them. I have been over with my best bets. I think we'll be okay on this one, though. Both going against the Bengals, though, even though they have the best against the spread record in the league this season, 12-3 and three against the spread. Uh, recapping the primetime picks, Brady is on the Ravens, Pete is on the Steelers on uh, Sunday night, and both on the Bills and the over. Lock unity there. Time for our best bets. And Pete just mentioned it, Brady. A lot of points sailing the over on that Monday nighter. Yeah, over of the 49 and a half between the Bills and, and the Cincinnati Bengals. I, I don't believe weather will be a factor in this one, but between both these quarterbacks, the way they play the season, you're, you're going to see basically, I think one of them leapfrog, obviously the other for the MVP race. It's Mahomes up top. The winner of this, though, will be right up there next to Patrick Mahomes, making a case for why they should be the most valuable player in the league. So a uh, lot of scoring in this one, even though I do think, again, the Bills' defense matches up well with Cincinnati. I still think they hit that over. Where's the graphic with the records for the best bets, by the way? I, I need I'm like 5-10-1. And, and I'm 10-5-1. and one. You are, So yeah. follow my best bet. Wait, but who's, who's winning? Right? Who's, who's ahead You're of, winning. You're in all picks. But, sure. Yeah, but you know what? Picking all the games is hard. Picking best oh, it bets. Is. There, it is. there you go. That's easy. Look at that. 10-5-1. and one. Woo! We I'm hot. And I'm going to stay hot. I'm going to take the Carolina Panthers as my best bet. They win the game outright. You don't need the points. Wow. You don't need them. Ending with Tampa Bay's opportunity yeah. in the postseason. No, they, what if Carolina lost last, next week? Well, it's still not possible. happening. Both teams at this point still control their own fate. The Saints are still in it. But you've got Carolina winning the game. So do you think Carolina ends up winning that division? Yes, I do. Wow. I think they win the division. Risk go. Okay. He's hot. Run it. You run it. You run it some more. Yeah. So much 13 and three last week. Yeah, but you know what? I'm due Brilliant. for garbage, and and that's why Brady has a lot of agreement with me. I feel bad for you because I'm due for a, just a bad week. You are, but I'll be okay because I have enough disagreements. So okay, I'll just keep winning. But what if you lose all the games you agree with me on, and I win the other one? Just end the show. This is it. <laughs> this is it. Two games to go. It's what they call Pete the penultimate week.
wow. of the like regular it. season good. in the NFL. It's Pete Frisco and Brady Quinn. I'm Chris Hassan. Thanks for watching. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.